Hey guys, Vladimir here with Desktop Mix. I wanted to do a video on a really neat plugin for Fusion called Mapboards Pro. Now what this allows you to do is it'll take your assembly and just lay it flat for all sorts of projects, mainly probably gonna be mostly woodworking, but there could be many uses for it. In my case here, I'm gonna take this simple shop cabinet I'm making. I'm currently building my little garage shop and also updating our makerspace shop. So this is a base cabinet I'm gonna be making. You could obviously put some shelves on here or some drawers. But I want to take this and lay it all flat and then use my table saw to cut it out. So this is the method I'm going to be using it for. But the basic idea is it's going to take your assembly and lay it flat to either cut or 3D print or laser cut or whatever you want to do with it. So we'll jump into the features and I'll cover the basics of how to get up and running with it. But before let's talk about how to install it. What this allows you to do is you can buy it from the app store and it's a one-time payment and then you have it. So let's go ahead and get it installed. Well, I have it already, but I'll show you how to do it. We're going to go to utilities, add-ins, go to Fusion App Store. And Fusion will automatically open up a browser here. You're going to go to the search bar and you're going to type map boards. Hit enter and you'll see two versions, a $15 one and a $25 one. The $15 one says it's just a light version of the $25 one, which is a pro version. I honestly don't know the difference, but for a one-time $10 difference, I just went ahead and went with the pro. Why not support the developer? And it was money well spent. So click buy now, it's gonna download and then you're gonna install it and then come back to Fusion. We'll restart Fusion and then if you don't see it automatically when you launch Fusion, just go to add-ins. So you're back here in your utilities tab, go to add-ins and then click on script and add-ins. And you wanna make sure here, if you scroll down, this has all your add-ins here. You'll see Mapboards Pro. Just click here to toggle it to run. And if you want it to automatically open up on startup, you can have this checked. All right, we'll close that. You're gonna go back to your solid tab and then you should see it here under your create menu. And Fusion will also throw it here on your toolbar. So when you're ready to use it, a couple things actually I'll touch on that will make it a lot more useful when you're actually using it is one, you wanna have everything that's gonna be, let's say if you're cutting everything out of one piece of material, in my case, plywood, you wanna have all the materials there be the same because this is how the plugin is gonna organize your bodies here, it's by materials. So if you're giving materials and you want them to all be out of the same material, what you wanna do is we'll click A for parents, expand this. And here I just gave everything a bamboo look. And then so what the software, when you launch, it's gonna look for everything that's the same material and it'll organize those into the same board. Avoid doing what I did at first. So I had, for example, cherry. And notice that there's cherry, there's glossy cherry, and then there's like semi-gloss. They might look the same, but the software is gonna recognize these as all different materials. Even though they're all cherry, the gloss, the semi-gloss, and the regular cherry would be viewed as separate. Another tip here, is you can simply take the material and drag it to the top of your browser here and that'll apply it to all your bodies at once. The other thing you wanna do here is you wanna name your body. So you can see here, I just have them all as one body. Now they don't have to be components. You can see here that I have everything listed as bodies, but I do have them labeled and that's gonna help tremendously when you do have your flat pack layout because there'll be an option to add the labels onto them and what the software does is just gonna pull the names from your bodies here. So having them labeled is gonna really help. All right, so now we're ready to launch it. We're gonna go to Create Map Boards Pro. You'll get this dialog box. And the first thing you'll want to do is set your material dimensions. So if you're going with a half piece of plywood, you do 48 by 48. I'm going to go with a full sheet, so I'll do 48 by 96. If you want all your body sent over, just make sure this is checked, include entire model. If you only want a certain selection of bodies, you would just go ahead and click to select them. And you'll see here, they're added to the list on the bottom here. Now you have to be careful there because I was doing this and it kept sending all the bodies. For some reason, when you start making individual selections, it doesn't uncheck include entire model. So you have to manually unselect that. And in this case, it would just send these three. So I do want to send everything. So I'm going to X out the three selected and then choose entire model here. Okay. After this, you don't want to hit okay yet. We're going to go into options 
And then here, we'll quickly go through some of the main options here. Component, map output type. So here you have component bodies. This basically just lays out the 3D models on a flat sheet, and you'll see them that way. If you want only like a 2D file, DXF or SVG, you have that option. Report output gives you basically a PDF printout. All right, match links vertically. If you just hover over any of these, it gives pretty good explanations of what they are. But this arrange type here is basically how you want it to be arranged on the plywood, matching with horizontally, vertically, or just allowing it to be diagonal. The diagonal option is mainly gonna be for C and C, where you're trying to optimize space, where matching links vertically or horizontally is going to be if you need to break these down for example for your table saw it's gonna make the main cuts easier for you by lining up the edges so you can play around with that unit type set that to inches display format you can do decimal or fraction you can set your display precision as high as 164th of an inch component spacing now this is the spacing between the parts i think the fault was eighth of an inch so let's just go with that for now, this is just the spacing between the parts it's going to lay out. The trim on board edge, this is the border around that it's going to leave. Let's say in this case I'm using plywood, so the border around the plywood, you can set that. If you want to go ahead and just keep the factory edges, just set this to zero. Spacing between boards, self-explanatory. I'm only using one board, so I, this is really not going to matter. Everything here will fit in one board, but if you have multiple boards, you can put a spacing there between them. And then you can experiment with the different options here for what you want checked and unchecked. I want to point out here the labels. If this is unchecked, you won't see any of those sliders. If you check this, it'll allow you to bring in the label names, which I, found, I find really helpful. But be careful here because when you first do this, or when I first did, these were all set to zero and I kept clicking check labels and I was getting nothing. That's because you have to then come in and tell the software how high you want your fonts to be so i'll say 2.5 for the labels and the dimensions and then the board will just say two inches so if you have these set to zero nothing happens so i was stuck on that for a while all right and so that looks good we're going to click ok and then just give fusion a few seconds to generate the board it'll take everything lay it flat and then you should see this so here it gives you your original assembly plus everything laid flat. So normally you'll want to come in and untoggle the visibility of your assembly there. And then you can see if I zoom in, everything is labeled. So we've got the name and the dimensions, very helpful. Depending on what you're gonna do with it is gonna determine how you want this laid out. For my case, what I'm going to do is rough cut these with a circular saw and then bring them to my table saw. So just got a table saw before I was cutting them all with the circular saw. So I'm looking forward to using my table saw now. But what I would normally do is probably just cut these to rough sizes and then come in and cut them more precisely on the table saw to their exact lengths. So the distance left between the bodies here was set to an eighth of an inch which is basically going to be the kerf of the saw blade. And if you were cutting this in one shot, that would be fine. But since I'm not going to do that, what I would probably do is just come in, just to get an idea of where I want to rough cut the wood. I would go ahead and change this to bodies and maybe start moving these over. And you have to do them separate, bodies and the text fields, because it doesn't bring them over as well. So I would change this, redo it, and then change this to sketch objects and then just select each one of these and bring them over. And then, so basically you can move these around as you, as you need to. And then I would then dimension out where I wanna cut this. I'm gonna show you a different way though. Let's look at another option. I'm gonna undo and we're gonna go back to before we created our map board. I'm gonna just recreate it again. And the only thing I'm gonna change here is that spacing. So remember we did have that option for component spacing. So instead of an eighth of an inch, let's say three inches, and then I'll click okay. And then I'll let it regenerate. So what this will do is it'll give three inch spacing between all the parts here. Let me untoggle the assembly here. And you can see it does it horizontally and vertically. 
it'd be nice if it had two separate values. For example, if I wanted to fit more of these here, like what's important is getting the rough cuts here, but these can be basically a, just a table saw curve length apart, but maybe in a future release. But this gets me to where I need to be right now, because what I would do now is just create a sketch here on that plane there. Let me untoggle the visibility here of, I'll expand the sketches here. Let me just untoggle these sketches. P for project, I'll project the outline of that, the plywood, and then I would draw maybe a couple lines here, one going straight down and then another one here. And then I'll just dimension these from the edge just to get an idea of the distance I want to be. So let's say 32 inches and then I'll do this one as well. Let's say 58. Okay, so this gives me a basic idea knowing I'll cut this down just a little bit bigger than what I need. The same thing with this one and then I'll have three, three separate pieces here that I can take to my table saw and get them more precisely cut. This is also useful if you're going to a hardware store like Home Depot or Lowe's and you want to have them cut it because maybe you need to fit it in your car. You don't want to give them exact dimensions. If you need 32 inches and you give them 32 inches, you're going to end up with, you know, the plus or minus an inch of what you actually needed. So in this case, you could just get your dimensions here and know where you need to cut it. So I find this useful for that. All right, I click on finish sketch and I wanna show you one more thing. You may just wanna have this view printed out so you can take it to your shop. A couple of ways you could do that. We can go back in the beginning when we first clicked on the Mapboards Pro and we had our dialog box to get our change the output type or we can actually do it right here. So if you look at the organization here, we have our bodies and our sketches from our design, and then there's a component here, maps, and then a subcomponent here that says map one, and then your boards here. If you click here on this map one, you right click, you'll see you get the options again to do map report, label, just a cut list. So let's do a map report. And what that does is it'll give you another dialog box here. and you can either view print or html only i'm going to do print again similar options that we had from before i'm just going to click ok and you see here we get a pdf here that we can save so let's just save this and when i open it you see i have my layout here with all my different panels and their labels their dimensions and then the next page, I have a cut list with the board, the quantity, the material, and the dimensions. And that continues to a different page. And then my settings here. All right, I just wanted to do a video on this plugin. As you can see, it's very straightforward, very easy to use. You just launch it and then follow the prompts. And very affordable, I think. Very great value for the price. If you are running the free version of Fusion, even if you're doing the paid version, you may find this also a great program to have in addition to Fusion's native tool that does the same thing. Let me know what you think of it. Do you think it's useful for what you use it if you have any other uses for it? Like I said, woodworking, you can use it for CNC, you can use it for laser cutting, water jet, or just laying out your project idea. If you do find it useful, let me know in the comments what you would use it for. Hope you found it helpful. If you have any questions, uh, get it to me in the comments. Thanks for watching and a huge thanks to my Patreon supporters. If you're looking to improve your fusion design skills, it's critical that you become comfortable with the use of sketch constraints, which will dramatically speed up your workflow. I've created a free constraints cheat sheet you can download. Check out the link below. I've also included links to my Fusion video courses and my Patreon page if you'd like to support my channel. All right, guys, I will see you in the next one.